Alright, this walkthrough is going to cover the planet, or sorry, a uh, small star to um, solar system progression. Um, basically, I'm splitting the star portion of this guide into two separate videos because uh, the star uh, level is basically the most involved of the four different um, levels that you can basically attain in this game, um, being asteroid, planet, star, and then black hole. Um, this is probably the one that you're going to spend the most time on. And there's two um, uh, so the, uh, two main uh, goals you can do. You can uh, head straight to black hole, or you can build up a massive solar system. And this guy is going to cover how to build up a massive solar system. Um, you want to start by... Uh, getting your planet in orbit of you and then start picking up asteroids with your planet uh, like we had done before to get to the star level um, as I mentioned earlier uh, you can hit the O key to show orbits which is what I've done now which is very useful at this point in the game um, considering you're going to be dealing with um, different planets moving at different speeds not to mention your star has its own gravitational pull as does your planet and at this point, we can collect up to three planets with uh, one small star. What we want to do is uh, start having two of them uh, get to the life stage while we um, start soaking up third planets and um, bringing them into the star in order to grow it to the medium size. As you see, I picked up um, one of those planets because it was kind of tiny. So. I'm still working on this uh, one particular one. I want to make sure that um, you soak up asteroids. And remember that, as you can see, uh, if you get too many asteroids, you, uh, they can end up colliding into other objects in your solar system, such as a star or other planets, which is why the orbit um, lines help a lot. Use the interface key to bring up um, the stats and then uh, switch back and forth to see how your star is doing and how your planet is doing. And I'll skip ahead in certain portions of this guide like this now um, because, all in all, it can take hours to get to a full solar system status. I'm going to try to cut that down as much as possible in this instance, but while still trying to be also thorough um, with how we go about doing this. And as you can see, we've got like two planets now almost at life stage. And it's important to be careful also at this point without having any shields on um, either the star or the planet. You can end up losing mass very quickly. As you can see, even those small lasers from that little starship is uh, deteriorating the planets. You can also use your star as um, a battery ram, which is something very useful. But again, that's uh, something you might want to wait until you get um, shields before doing too much of. What I was actually trying to do there is um, you can steal uh, enemy planets by knocking them out of orbit of the solar system. And if uh, you can do that and still keep the life on it while it gets knocked out of orbit, then you can uh, end up catching it in your orbit and have um, a star that basically already has uh, life going on. As you can see, now we've got one uh, that just hit life and it's starting to evolve right now. While we're doing that, we're also uh, working on these other planets here. We 
because those are going to only go three planets. So I'm going to keep soaking up um, a lot of planets. And now we've got uh, shields on the one planet. And eventually, as we get more planets um, evolved with life on them, they'll be able to uh, put shields on the star itself. As you can see, I hit the path key, which is P for um, people on the computer. And this uh, is another little assistance which helps you show uh, the paths everything is traveling in. Kind of gives you a good idea of their gravitational pull. And combined with the orbit key, it can help you um, collect asteroids a lot faster while also avoiding uh, colliding. Now we've got two planets evolved. And at the same time, we also want to start slowly building up one of those life planets to become a new star, because you can have many different stars as part of your solar system. Um, I've made it up to five personally, and I'm pretty sure you can go even further. And if you can get, um, if you spend the time to get a solar system with like five or six large stars, you can use it as a super battering round, especially if you have shields on all of them. As you can see now we've hit the medium star phase, which means now we can have six planets at once. Picked up another evolving planet, you know, let life grow on that one. And then start working our way towards having five planets with life on them while soaking up an additional six every time you pick one up. That way you can keep progressing to the large star. When using um, the paths and orbits, uh, it helps to have basically um, you want the path lines that are drawn from the planets or asteroids to basically be parallel to the um, path lines of your the orbiting planets or your star system itself when picking up uh, the planets. I know that kind of sounds complicated, but hopefully um, this video along with that description kind of shows you what I mean. Those missile ships are typically the most brutal against your um, unshielded planets. And as you can see now, we have a shield on the star because we've got enough um, evolution going on our planets along with enough experience. Those are two important factors. You always want to make sure you're training your planets at the same time that you're going here. That we can get the strong ships, better shields, and so on and so forth. As you can see here, I try to do that battering ram thing again to get myself a planet out of this orbit, but uh, that didn't work so well. And that's something to expect, you know, minor setbacks here and there, but for the most part, as long as you continue growing your star, um, you can always find additional life plants or steel uh, to make up some of your last progress. Well, it's good to protect at least um, one planet that's closest to becoming a new star. Because typically it's hard to find uh, life planets or even steal them with uh, a lot of mass on them. Usually they're on the lower end of the mass scale. The 
best part about this game is that you can save your solar systems as you build them. And um, one particular useful thing I found is to save them in stages. Uh, like once you get one star, two stars, and so on. Because um, if you're going to go for a black hole, um, which I'll cover in a separate video, you're going to want to have um, just one star because it will be the fastest to get there. Since you can't have stars soak up other stars, and when uh, you have several stars, they'll start um, soaking up planets evenly so that they all grow at the same rate. Another useful thing here is what I'm trying to do is uh, colliding that non-life planet for a life planet, which I just did. And that's a useful trade to make. <laughs> Especially if you can keep the life alive on the planet. Like All you gotta do, uh, it's best to hit it in the opposite direction that it's traveling and an angle away from the star that it's orbiting. That way it quickly leaves the gravity well and then you can just fly in that direction and pick it up. The best way to keep doing that kind of thing too is uh, to keep your um, planets without life uh, orbiting as far away as possible from your sun when you pick them up. Now uh, if you pick one up that's too close, just soak it up and try it again. And remember, keep getting asteroids. And as your solar system gets bigger, you're going to start dealing with gravity more and more. I and mean, as you can see, those asteroids start to like just swarm towards uh, your solar system as they uh, got near. As you can see, hitting it from the back doesn't uh, knock it off the gravity well. And hitting it towards the star like I just did can knock it back into orbit. And then you're just uh, damaging yourself. But there is for sure the This is definitely also the most interesting part of the game to just experiment at. Also, if you find yourself um, having difficulty making progress, I suggest uh, saving your solar system more often, like every time you get a new evolved planet or soak up a certain amount of asteroids. That way, if you lose a couple planets in a stupid mistake somehow, um, you can just jump back to where you were before instead of having to deal with rebuilding or recovering your lost progress. And it's always good again. Letting you guys build up some experience.
Also, at this point in the game, it's um, pretty much impossible uh, to avoid getting hit by asteroids, which is why it also looks great to have those shields. And as you can see, we just hit large status, which means that we can get more timers now. amount of planets you can have is 10. You can get there um, either through having a single large star along with like a pair of stars or something or having several smaller stars whatever uh, works for you. And as you can see we just got that uh, second star up. At this point, we've hit the cap in um, how many planets we can control, so adding additional stars doesn't really grow your solar system planet-wise. However, you can give yourself stronger gravitational pulls um, in addition to uh, if you want to use your solar system later as a battering ram, which uh, works in some of the missions um, that you're going to be doing. It's useful to have. When I did the mission videos, as you'll see, um, at most I've used three stars at large status. So you don't need to go all the way that I do in this video, because I'm going to take this to five. You know, this is more of um, just an example. But it does indeed, um, it will make it easier later on in the game. If you're having trouble with the missions, just build up an even bigger solar system for uh, conquering some of those. Now when you start soaking up planets into your stars, they're going to start going into the smallest star first um, to make sure that all of them go at an equal pace. Which is important to know if you're trying to grow a particular star quickly. Um, you want to probably soak up planets into it before you add a third or fourth star into your solar system. But always remember to keep those planets uh, with life on them. That way you have shields and can protect yourself from using mass or getting messed up by uh, um, spaceships. Another useful thing in having a big solar system is you get to see more of the map. Because as your solar system grows, so does your view of uh, the universe. And now we have three stars. As you get more stars, it becomes slightly more challenging in that you know you have that stronger gravitational pull you now have to deal with, which can help in some situations and in others it can be hampering. Um, like sometimes with the asteroids it can end up uh, flying way too fast that it makes it difficult to catch them in your orbits, right? However, um, as long as you just compensate for it by moving with them, it should be alright for the most part. I'm gonna eventually build them all up to large stars, which makes you really, really powerful. But in this case, uh, I'm 
I'm gonna stop about here. I'm just gonna show you a little bit what you can do. And at this point, you can just keep following the same strategy to build yourself up more and more. And then you can pretty much uh, go sandbox here by just uh, doing whatever you like, fighting enemy source systems, taking on the missions if you want, or just causing general havoc. 